The China Huarong story is about stress and turmoil at what is one of China's largest managers of distressed debt. In one of the country's most high-profile corruption cases, the former chairman of state-owned China Huarong Asset Management has been sentenced to death. Lai Xiaomin was convicted of receiving more than $270 million over a decade. The rare and tough sentence. That was considered a particularly harsh punishment for corruption. In part, the swift sentencing was taken to be the latest sign of the Chinese Communist Party cracking down on corruption, particularly within the financial system and within the political system. We do have breaking news coming from uh, Hu Rong, this troubled asset manager here, just seeing her, uh, reports of a looming restructuring, of course, playing out on this, and the bond route there is deepening. Investors concerned about the finances of state-owned bad debt manager at China, Huarong, and its silence isn't helping. I'm standing outside. China Huarong's bond prices have been incredibly volatile over the last two months. It's of huge concern because this could test China's debt-ridden financial sectors and the technocrats that run it, as well as all of the foreign banks and the investors who have been caught in between the drama. My name is Rebecca Chung Wilkins. I'm a reporter and editor for Bloomberg News China Credit Team. China Huarong is one of China's largest distressed debt managers. It's a so-called bad bank. It has long been considered of systemic importance, partly because its larger shareholder is the Ministry of Finance. It was created in 1999 along with three other asset managers to try and deal with some of the bad debt in China's economy. So those were things like bonds or loans that companies had defaulted on. And they're considered essential to the running of China's $54 trillion financial market so-called bad banks, help carry that risk on their own balance sheet and help curb all of that bad debt and remove it, essentially, away from the rest of the financial system. And that allows China's other financial institutions and its other banks to continue with different kinds of banking services that essentially help China's economy to continue growing. Lai Xiaomin uh, ran China Huarong from 2012 until 2018. He was also sometimes known as the god of wealth, um, had a background in some of China's top financial institutions. He had posts in the People's Bank of China, um, as well as China's Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission. Under Lai Xiaomin's leadership at China Huarong, he expanded from the firm's original mandate dealing with bad debts um, into things like securities trading and trusts. He also uh, turned to the uh, public debt markets to try and fund some of that expansion. So under Lai Xiaomin, we also saw a massive expansion of the firm's uh, bonds, outstanding bonds. And those types of debts were sold to both mainland onshore investors as well as global investors overseas in the form of dollar bonds as well as UN and Hong Kong dollar denominated bonds. Lai Xiaomin was sometimes criticized for just caring about short-term profits and trying to go way beyond the brief of what traditionally a bad bank like China Huarong would be dealing with. And the owner of the bank is a few hundred, a few hundred, a few hundred, a few hundred. It gives you a little money. For him, it's a small amount. For himself, he thinks, I'm supporting him so much. He's all helping him to grow. I myself, 就是, he was actually charged with bribery and taking illicit payments. In the course of the trial, it came to light that Lai Xiaomin had over the years collected a spate of luxury cars, of luxurious apartments and expensive watches. 
he had an apartment that he had renamed the supermarket um, that was later found to uh, have cabinets that were full of cash. And a lot of this came to light during the trial, some of which was televised and um, became quite a public spectacle. He was executed earlier this year. The former board chairman of one of China's biggest asset management companies, Lai Xiaoming, was executed on Friday, authorities said. It was found that he had... So Wang Zhangfang was um, appointed afterwards to take over the running of China Huarong and essentially to try and get it back onto a safe and steady footing. That included things like shaping up its financial health and pulling back from some of the riskier areas that Lai Xiaomin has expanded into under his leadership. He was seen to be uh, certainly not as flamboyant as his predecessor, but also brought in specifically to try and introduce a more serious and professional management style at China Huarong too. Concerns first flared at the company uh, at the end of March when the firm failed to release its 2020 annual reports. Fundamentally, what it means is that investors and we don't have a very clear insight into precisely how that cleanup has actually gone over the last year. So investors suddenly started to worry that there could be some issues with its financial health. Now that was then exacerbated by several media reports that there could be a potential financial restructuring at China Huarong. Well, obviously this has been a saga now. Uh, last week, you know, speculation about a possible debt restructuring sent its overseas bonds down to record lows. We've got another ratings downgrade for Huarong. You've got to wonder whether this, this is a little bit of a delayed reaction. Well, as we've seen, it has been a rocky April for Huarong uh, bond investors, and we have seen uh, those notes continue to hit fresh lows. And in the wake of this New York Times report... China Huarong's bond prices have been incredibly volatile over the last two months. In fact, they've been far and away the most uh, volatile trading that we've seen in the offshore bond market, and they've actually weighed on the broader bond market as well. China Huarong is one of the bigger borrowers among Chinese firms. At the moment, it has about $40 billion worth of outstanding bonds in the onshore and offshore market. About $4 billion of that needs to be repaid or refinanced this year. When China Huarong first started selling a lot of offshore debt, it was considered by investors to be a really safe bet. It was considered a quasi-sovereign, it had an investment grade quality rating, and the debt itself was really popular among many institutional investors and many international investors. Firms like BlackRock, Allianz and Goldman Sachs were all once buyers of the notes. Now, the offshore investors are in a little bit of a tricky situation. One reason why investors have become so worried and so panicked about China Huarong is the relative silence since they said they would be delaying their 2020 results. We've really only seen the company and regulators come out once or twice with public comments uh, to try and ease concerns. Regulators, for example, have said that China Huarong has ample liquidity and that its operations are running normally. Similarly, we've seen some comments from the company itself also trying to reassure investors that its liquidity is good and that its operations are running normally. However, there generally has been a kind of lack of information around precisely what's going to happen at the company. What we do know is that senior management has become much more accustomed to meeting with regulators and authorities and having last minute meetings. And we also know that the company is now providing a weekly update on how its liquidity conditions are going and whether or not its operations are running normally. 
In the short term, China Huarong is expected to meet its debt repayments. And that's partly because Huarong has been said to come to this agreement where state banks will support meeting its debt obligations that come due through August. On the other hand, however, the longer term concerns about the fate of China Huarong persist. Ultimately, investors now are waiting to see whether or not Beijing and authorities step in to provide a kind of guarantee or a kind of bailout to China Huarong. I think the assumption generally is that authorities do not want to see a failure at Huarong which roils the broader market. If we were to see fundamental and painful restructuring of China Huarong, or if we were allowed to see any kind of payment failure at a firm like Huarong, which is considered to be of systemic importance, which was backed by uh, central government institutions, then that really would change the way that investors look at this market.